The absolute universe is introduced to Diana, the last Amazon, raised in hell by Cersei, and the latest protector of Elseworld. Can a prisoner of the gods stop an invasion of demons from overrunning Earth? Let's find out in Absolute Wonder Woman number one from DC Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Absolute Wonder Woman number one. You know, I'll say this for writer Kelly Thompson. She understood the homework assignment. Absolute Wonder Woman is a stark contrast from the Wonder Woman you thought you knew in a world spawned from dark side energy. At the very least, Absolute Wonder Woman hits the mark for the Absolute imprint much better than Absolute Batman, and that's saying something. To be blunt, I think I like Absolute Wonder Woman better than Batman, and I was thoroughly impressed. Absolute Wonder Woman number one begins with a brief prologue in Gateway City, California. A massive inverted pyramid appears hovering above the coastline. Within moments of the appearance, a swarm of flying reptilian creatures swarms out from the pyramid to attack anyone within reach. Writer Kelly Thompson begins the tale with a large-scale attack that feels otherworldly and mystical, like a scene from a fantasy novel. The creatures and the reason for their attack aren't given much setup, more on that a little bit later, but it's an energetic start that gets your blood pumping right away. Suddenly, a woman wearing armor, carrying a very large sword, and riding on a skeletal pegasus swoops in to attack the swarm. She first uses her sword to separate heads and limbs from bodies. Then she lands on the shore and casts a spell with her gauntlets that stuns the swarm, sending the flock crashing to the ground below. Absolute Wonder Woman's entrance is as dramatic as you can get without having a giant orchestral theme song playing in the background. You'll get the impression that Diana's first appearance borrows some inspiration from Wonder Woman's first entrance on the battlefield in Batman vs. Superman or BVS, the Snyder film if you prefer. If the inspiration is coincidental, it's amazingly coincidental. The comic then flashes back to some unknown point in the distant past to show Diana's upbringing. Cersei is the sole resident of the Wild Isle as punishment for some transgression against the gods. This island is abandoned and it resides somewhere in hell. Apollo arrives one day with a baby, ordering Cersei to take custody of the child to be her warden. Diana of Themyscira, which is the baby, was taken from the Amazons by Zeus as punishment for their crimes against the gods. And the gods have decreed that Cersei will be Diana's warden in hell for all of time. Well, that's quite a mouthful. Based on the narration and the characters involved, the phrasing makes it clear that the reader isn't getting the full story, and that the narrators are unreliable to a certain degree. Apollo tells rather than shows how Diana came to be in Hell, which is a minor letdown, more on that later because of the lack of setup. Over several pages we see how Cersei was initially fine with letting beasts, monsters, and demons attempt to kill the child since she had no desire for a daughter of her own. However, the baby had the instinctive strength and charm to tame any casual attacker. As the years passed, Cersei eventually came to love Diana as her own daughter, educating her in the ways of history and magic. If you're going to come up with a credible way for Cersei and Diana to be in a loving relationship, Thompson nails it. Cersei's sparse cave evolves into a home over the course of years, partly due to Diana's influence so you get a believable sense of how the two could grow and bond with each other to become a truly loving mother and daughter. If you're going to take the Wonder Woman mythology and create a clever, subversive twist to it, this is one of the strongest points that Thompson has invented. Back to the present, Diana tells nearby military men to evacuate the shoreline and anyone within a one mile radius, as the flying reptiles called Harbingers are only stunned, not killed, the situation escalates when the inverted pyramid opens up to unleash a massive demon called Harbinger Prime to attack Diana and clear the way for something much, much worse waiting in the wings. The issue concludes with Harbinger Prime giving as much damage as it takes, young Diana learning to say a word forbidden to be spoken by Circe, and absolute Wonder Woman drawing a line in the sand, both literally and figuratively. And that's the issue. So let's talk about the positives and negatives, starting with what's great about Absolute Wonder Woman number one. Kelly Thompson's central premise delivers on the idea of an Elseworld version of Diana in a universe spawned by dark side energy. There are familiar aspects to Diana's origin and her personality, but everything after her birth is dark and twisted enough to explain a rougher, tougher Wonder Woman accustomed to demons and dark magic. 
In a lot of ways, Thompson's Absolute Wonder Woman does a better job of presenting a character that feels different enough from the original to stand on her own while still presenting as a character you would recognize as Wonder Woman. I wish Absolute Batman had gone this far. So let's switch over to the negatives and talk about what's not great about Absolute Wonder Woman number one. There are two weak points in this first issue, one with the story, the other with the art. Starting with the story, a lot of the interesting stuff happens without any context or setup. What did the Amazons do to get on Zeus's bad side? Why is Cersei in hell? Where did a giant inverted pyramid come from? Where did Diana and her skeletal Pegasus come from? Epic sounding and looking events pop in and out from nowhere and you sort of just have to accept it. To be fair, the flow of the narrative is good enough that you can simply accept it well enough and move on to continue with the story, but the world building is a little lacking in spots. Let's switch gears and talk about the art for a second, which in my opinion is the second weak point of this issue. Hayden Sherman's art is just okay, but for what this story needed to present, I'm not a fan. This was a moment for DC to shine with gritty, grimy, nasty art that practically pummels your eyes with the visual equivalent of raw electric guitar riffs and explosive bass notes. Instead, we get squiggly line art that looks like what you'd expect from an indie comic. In kindness to Hayden Sherman, the art style would not be a problem in any other context, but this is the moment the art needs to smash you in the face and knock your socks off. On that count, Sherman's style just falls a little too short. Final thoughts, what do we think about Absolute Wonder Woman number one? It presents a rougher, darker, mystical Wonder Woman fit to fight all comers in a universe spawned by dark side energy. Despite the mildly annoying lack of setup in a few spots, Kelly Thompson nailed the assignment to create a Wonder Woman who's recognizable but stands wholly apart from her Earth Prime counterpart. Sadly, the material needed art with a harder, sharper edge so the visuals don't live up to the script. Therefore, Absolute Wonder Woman number one earns an 8.5 out of 10. This issue earns a slightly lower score than Absolute Batman, but the difference is mostly due to the art. Story-wise, I think I prefer Absolute Wonder Woman better. But what do you think? Are you looking forward to a grittier version of Wonder Woman? Leave a thumbs up if you are, and drop a comment below with which Absolute version of DC characters is your most anticipated. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review, check out the variant covers and preview pages, and buy this comic to help support the channel. Your support, of course, is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.